fantastic, man. Hello, my angel. I've missed you. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. I still sound a bit like a croaky frog. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, but um, I've actually got quite a lot of memos because I've been sending you stuff. So, you won't have, uh, I haven't actually had time to actually do the memos on paper to send to you, but I will today. So, um, the algebra, I have memos. So, uh, that... Um, this algebra, which was, it said good questions, but I've only sent it to you up to there. I could send the memo, but I'd also really like to do it as a learning channel. Um, and then I gave you a, um, a total of eight exponential equations, four when I saw you on Monday, and I think four on Friday. So I want to quickly go through all of those four. So let's just quickly have a look. We're doing exponential equations where x is in the exponent. Solve for x, no calculator. Now the first one I'm going to do, it doesn't matter. Do you remember I gave you somewhere? 2 to the exponent of x minus 1 over 8 equals to 0. Guys, this is a level 2 very, very easy. Remember, level 1 is pure theory. Level 2 is the stuff you do every day, and it's easy, middle, hard. You had this in grade 8. X is in the exponent, but because it's only one term here, you can take that constant term to the other side, and it will become positive. So now if you only have one term on each side, that is when you break your base into the same base, so you can equate the exponents. And remember, 1 over 8 is the same as 8 to the minus 1. All right? I'm just reminding you all because some of you still battling a bit with that concept. Remember, jump the line, change the sign of exponent. Eight is just two to the exponent of three, and you're raising that to the minus one. Now, I'm showing more steps than you need to. Sorry, I don't know if you can see the bottom. So two to the x would equals two to the negative three, and therefore, you can equate the exponents. Right. So that is the first example. Guys, some of you might be able to um, snapshot like a camera each picture. That would be very, very useful. Um, if you can't do that, you just got to write profusely quickly. And if you can't do that, I believe the lesson's being recorded. So I am just going to now move on. So you might not get so cross with me because I'm going to wrap it up now and you're only there. Just don't panic. What do I always say? Muni panikni. Okay? Life is too short. Be happy every day, even in, you know, times where there's viruses oh, coming to try and, you know, get us. Always be happy. I've actually found so many good things that have come out of this lockdown. Okay? Spending time with my family. It's actually been, uh, I'm glad this has happened. I just don't like the deaths, obviously. But um, it's reevaluating life and priorities. That's what it is, reevaluating life and forest. Okay, let's look at the next one. Number B. All right, so number B, what have we got? We've got two dot, which we know means times, three to the x, plus, take note of constant, no x variable, equals another constant. So this is not a factorized one because you can bring this constant of plus five to the right, but obviously you've got to subtract the five, and then it just becomes, look, two, which means dot times three to the x, and now you have 23 minus five. Who can tell me what is 23 minus five the quickest or we muted? 18. You say 18? 19, 20, Yes. Was that nearly? How did you know? Yes. I am getting to actually recognize your voice now. <laughs> because um, there's certain um, of you grade 11s who participate more than others, and I'm getting to know those voices. I'm proud of myself. Now, guys, you cannot multiply that together. You cannot say this is 6 to the x, right? Because there are different bases. They have different exponents. You cannot do that. But what you can do, I've got a new board eraser, it's called my sleeve. What you can do 
is you can divide both sides by two, surely, okay? And then that is how you would divide out the twos, leaving you, okay, I'm scared you can't see the bottom of the board, so I'm just gonna go here, leaving your three to the X, and 18 divided by two is nine, Nine, we know, is three squared. You could have gone straight into that step. So x is two. Okay, the two examples I've done now, level two, easy. If I got these in my exams, I'd, I'd, thank, I'd thank my lucky stars. I'm not saying you wouldn't, but the probability, if I may say, the ones you get will be a bit harder than this, because you're grade 11, but not much harder. So don't panic. What's my saying? Who remembers what's my saying? Money panic me. Money panic me. Exactly. Okay, I'm just taking off my um, eraser. I can still use the sleeve to wipe the board. I'm just I'm hot from all this running around. Okay, number C. And if I remember, <clears throat> I think number C was also level too easy. Um, Let's do it before we actually say that. Uh, what was it? Okay. It is because, guys, this is the kind of example you did in grade 10. Okay. And I think that we've done it again this term, this year. But I've, I've introduced other things like a 2x and a 1x and a plus x and a minus x. So now you guys are getting a bit confused between these three. But look, you've got a term and there's 5 to the x. You've got another term with a base 5 to the x. So that means we're going to have to factorize. Have to factorize. You cannot break this all up to 5s, drop the base. You cannot. And if you remember, I said don't touch that number. Leave it on ice. But H, yes? Because that number is going to change. How do I know that? Well, if you break this into factors, 5 to the x times 5 to the 2 minus 4 times 5 to the x equals 105. If I take out the highest common factor of 5 to the x, you're going to get a quotient, an answer to that division, right? So does everyone understand? The two terms on the left, I'm taking out the factor 5 to the x as a highest common factor. And you are left in this term. Guys, don't talk. You're left with this term with 5 squared, which is 25 minus. Here you have a 4, right? Now let's add that number up. It's 29. Do you agree with me? All right? So you've got 5 to the x times uh, 21. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I found my own error. Now, do you understand? I need to get rid of this factor. You cannot times those together. So you will divide both sides, okay? I don't know if you can see the bottom of my screen, so I'm moving it up here. So you've got 5 to the x, and I've got 105. Sorry, I wrote that so bad. It almost looked like 10 to the exponent of 5. And then I must divide the 105 by 21, okay? Who can tell me what's that quotient cross? Who's got the first? Who can, who can divide 105 by 21 with now? Five. Yes. At the same time I deal with my calculator. Well done. Clap, clap, clap. Okay. So it was actually a very good guess. It really was. <laughs> it was a good guess that it was going to be five to the something because I kind of knew I needed that. But if it's exactly five, remember this five has a ghost exponent of plus one. So now, therefore, drop the bases, and there you have it. So that is, it's still level two. And guys, if you want me to say middle, just because it was slightly different, we had to take out a highest common factor, okay? But it, it, it was still middle to easy. Because you've got to understand, it's like drill routine. If you see terms, and you see the same base with plus one, same base plus one, it could be minus x, minus x, 2x, 2x. But what I'm trying to say is the variable index is exactly the same, whatever it is. Whether it's a 3x, 3x, minus x, minus x, you take that out as the highest common factor. The only two 
times you use k method, if the one variable index is a 2x, while in the other term, the variable index is 1x. Now that becomes k method, all right? I hope that Lech, while you're watching this, because I could see you're a bit confused. Maybe you hadn't seen the videos, and I know how intelligent you are. So to understand that, we would say let that be k. So that would be, well, it would actually be 25k squared minus 4. It would, you know, it would become a trinomial. But I'm not, it, that's not the question. And then just for interest, if you have, let's say, plus x minus x plus 2 as you expect, and then you have 5 to the minus x, which you can then just bring down, it becomes 5, that's k method. So k method is when you get that k scenario, or k method is when you get that k scenario, double index, and if they're the exact same index variable, that is when you always take out your highest common factor. So I hope that cleared that up a little bit. Okay, I have quite a few more to do, so if it's okay, I'm going to erase. Remember this lesson is recorded, okay. Okay, let's see the next one, number D. Okay, number D, number D, number D. Right, let's have a look and then we can see if it's easy or hard. Okay, 4 to the 3 minus x. Then I notice it's minus a constant equals a constant. This is going to be very easy because look, here is your 4 to the 3 minus x, and that is 13. Take it across plus 3. Okay, now there's a, there might be a problem here. And if you know what the problem might be, um, I'll put no. I was going to say for a minute, I thought the bases wouldn't be the same, and then we'd have to use logarithms, but that's great 12. But you see, that's 16, it's going to be fine because. 16, look, I could break them both to prime. I could break them both down to 2. But 16 is 4 squared. So let's take the easier route. But you see again, this now becomes level 2. Very, very, very easy. Grade 9, actually. So if I move up, boof, do you agree that now I can equate the exponents? Because it's one turn, one turn. That is the only time you would have to drop the base equate the exponent. So we have 3 minus x equals to 2. So should we take the minus x there, bring the 2 here. So 3 minus 2 equals to positive x. So x equals 2, 1. I think that's the second time x has been 1. Okay, and 1 rhymes with the sun. And the sun is very useful because it kills that virus. Just telling you, so, uh, yeah, what I do, every time I come home from Greenside, I take off my or shopping face mask, I put it on the dashboard, I drive my car into the sun, and I leave it there for about an hour or two, and it cooks, obviously. I mean, at the temperature, a car can get as high as 14 plus in the summer higher, and then it should be killing the virus. So the sun is marvelous. You have to all agree with that. You all agree that the sun is marvelous. Without it, we would not be alive. Okay, you've probably been muted out. Right, then I gave you these examples. See if you remember. Um, oh, those are exactly the same. Okay, then forget that. Then let's just for now leave that. Let's move on to these very good questions. Now, this is a mixture of algebra as in um, I'm just looking at it. Then uh, there's definitely nature of roots in it, quadratic inequalities, the equations, exponential equations. That's why I said they're good questions. This is so fun. I can't wait to do it. But I have to take out now this heading. And so for x, both, both, both. okay, I'm going to leave that. But we're not doing exponential only. What if there might be exponential? I've got a big feeling question 1.2 is, but we are just doing basically now algebra. We're going to mix it all together. Now, you should have done this already. Your page just ended a bit earlier, all right? Because the next question's a bit hard, and I thought I'd like to do that as a learning channel. Okay, so algebra and exponents. 
And when I just say an exponent, that means I can bring in my exponential equations. All right. The first question, solve for x, no calculators, 2x minus 3, that's a binomial, two turnies in the brackets. Remember the biplanes used to have two wings, by two, no mil, squared. Now, we've actually done this exact question before. In a, in a few lessons, if you were to rewind or take things, I know we've done this before. But it doesn't matter, I'm going to do it again. Guys, there are two ways to do this. Some of the A students know exactly what you could do. You could square root both sides and get a plus minus, bring it over. But the majority of the students, and therefore, you know, being a very democratic person, I'm going to do it the way I think 80% of you would do. I think you, you would foil that out. So if you foil it, you're going to get 4x squared. Remember, square the first term. Times these together with the signs, so plus times minus is minus. 2 times 3 is 6, 6x, six but you double it. So it's going to be minus 12x, and that is always positive. Square the last 9. Bring the 4 over, so minus 4, and please don't drop the inequality. So do you really have chops? We've got 4x squared minus 12x plus 5. Now, I know you could take out 4 here and here, but you can't take out 4 there. So you can't take out any factor, highest common factor. Now, if you cannot factorize this, yes, you can use your quadratic formula. But then please show the substitution into the formula. And remember, if you use the beast, which is our name for the quadratic formula, if it's the quadratic x squared inequality, then instead of going x equals to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, then would you in this section go c v's of x? All right? You don't get a mark for that. Do we understand? So your mark, c v's of x equals, this is where you get the mark. I just, I'm just telling you that right now. Now, I'm doing it using the quad formula just because a lot of you really battle with factorize. The whole side is over two times a, and you would get a value. But guess what? I have, I'm under a time restriction. I'm taking that out. I'm going to factorize this. Why? Because I can. All right? We want the sum of 12 from 4 and 5. Now, 4 is either 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. Five, I love prime numbers. Oh, they're the best. Because this can only be five times one or one times five. Okay? There are no other factors because a prime number only has two factors. Now, we're looking for, we're going to cross multiply the sum of 12. So, four times one is four. One times five is five. Four plus five is nine. Nine is not 12. Try again. 4 times 5 is 20, 1 times 1 is 1, 20 minus 1 is 19, not 12. Money panic me. Next, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12. Ching. Okay, so these guys go in the top, at the back, they're my two factor brackets. Don't drop your inequality, or you will lose a mark. Right, so the twos are there, so it's 2x, 2x, and the five has to go, has to go in the left and, and the one on the right. You've got to keep it in the order. If the last sign is plus, we know the signs are the same. They will both be the first sign, so it's for both. Then you could quickly check that, like really fast, I'm doing it so fast. You can hardly see me do it, done. Okay, I foiled it in my head to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Now, if we've got two out of four, I want to say one thing, five, three out of five, three out of five, that's not bad at all, 60%. But you do not end these by saying this bracket is smaller than naught or this bracket is smaller than naught. I guarantee you will stop marking. You've got to get the CVs, all right? So you've got to tell your examiner, I'm going to move here, 
the critical values, which are also X intersect, right? But they, they're critical. Um, that means they're kind of what? Very important. Do you agree? It's critical to take your medicine if you're sick. So they, they're very important X intersects, right? Critical values of X from this factor. If you let that be not, do you agree? You take the minus five and then divide by the two. So can you see I'm going to get, um, um, take the five over the, five over two, which is just two and a half. And from that factor, take the minus one, divide by the two. So you're going to get a half because the minus one would become positive one, divide by two. Right, those are the critical values. There's a mark. You now have four to five. I'm going to give you a high five because you've just got 80% for this question, but you don't have a hundred. How do you get a hundred? Right? Do you remember? This is a happy parabola. Do you see my very happy parabola? Because the coefficient of the x squared is positive. That's my x-axis, right? Which number is bigger? Well, two and a half is much bigger than a half. So this x-intercept, which is critically important, is a half. And this x-intercept, which is critically important, is five over two, which is two and a half. Now look at my diagram. Do you all see that that is where x equals to naught, and that's where x equals to naught, all right? Um, not, uh, not x, y, sorry, the y value, okay? Okay, so y is naught there in Okay, obviously those are the x values. That was a really slip of the tongue. But what I wanted to say, can you see this was two and a half. Now if you move to the right on the x-axis, x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you see, I'm going to just take that away. You see the parabola is going to just go up, 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 up. So you see we're going to end up using every value possible. For, for my parabola to be above the x-axis, to be above, to be positive. If you're above the depression of the COVID, you're positive, all right? My parabola is, is positive. There, the y value would be naught, and here again, but now watch, here my parabola is negative. Oh, because look, it's below the surface. It's dug itself into a hole like an ostrich. It doesn't want to deal with this. It's very negative, but it's okay. We can always make negative positive, okay? You can ask people to add that. Ah, there's a joke there. All right, now we're gonna go, ah, 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 The parabola will, as x gets smaller, the parabola is still gonna stay positively up. It's not coming down, it's staying up. Right, so what is the question? Where is my parabola smaller than zero, which means negative, which means below the x axis. Right, now we're not including and the critical values where y is naught. So my parabola is below there, so we can't include the very critical values, but you understand we want to go from there to there. No, I'd have to say between. Between there to there. Remember, between you exclude the two inputs. From you would include them. That is where my graph is down, negative, right? Negative. So you can either say x must be bigger than a half, but smaller than five over two. That's how you could write it. It's an interval. There's a start, there's an end. Or you could write your answer. Some of you like to go x is an element, and then you put the smaller on the left, semicolon, the bigger on the right. If it's exclusive, look, not inclusive, Round, round. That is called interval notation. That is basically X element of reals. It's sloppy set builder because we've even dropped the set. But you are allowed uh, to do that. Yes, Lanchop. Uh, in an exam, would they ask us, um, would they give us this and then tell us which way to write the answer out? Or Never. Can we write it out? No, in grade 10, they would have done that. You, you, you even got that in grade 10. Do you remember? Solve for X, represent it on a number line, write it in interval notation. Um, but in grade 11 slash 12, you can choose the one you like, and you don't even have to write that. We assume if we, you know, if X was an element of only natural numbers, then we'd have to state that. But if we don't see anything, we assume X is an element of the real. So that would give you full marks if you did that full marks. You must now choose the one you like the best. Right? 
It's like flavors. You've got strawberry ice cream or chocolate ice cream. You can, now you're in grade 11, you bid, you know, so you can choose. You choose the strawberry or the chocolate. No one will force you. You have to write your answer in a certain way. And if they ever do, I'll eat my hat. Okay, but I, I don't have a hat. So <laughs> oh, I do actually. I do have a hat. There it is. Do you remember we had hat day the other day? Okay. I'll put it on. But if they ever did say, you have to write your answer in a certain way, I'll have to somehow eat this. Right, I'll have to cut it up and put it in a stew because it, I don't know how else to eat it. All right, we're still solving for X. Guys, I can't really remove that line. I hope it's not a problem. I'm just gonna leave it there for good luck. All right? Right. Let's move on with the next. Now, I know a lot of you can do this now. But I also know a lot of you battle with the end of those questions. And it's never, ever a bad thing to see your teacher do one every day. Every day. Do one quadratic inequality. Because you will always get that in your grade 11 exam, the trick final. Probably twice. One in the algebra and one somewhere else. Maybe in the function. Because they could ask you that question in a parabola question. Just, I'm making this up. But... If your parabola is like that, let's say that is minus two and that is four, and this is arrow, arrow, f, and they say for what value of x is f of x, let's say they say greater than zero. Now this is, you've got to actually be careful because this is an unhappy parabola. So when it's unhappy, then it actually kind of reverses because again, we're not including the critical values, but if it's a sad parabola, greater than zero means above the x-axis. And again, you see it would be actually between those values. So the answer would be x is greater than minus two, smaller than four. Or x element minus two, four, round, round. If they said and equals to, above and equals to, we just add the and equals. And then, guys, you would have to use square. And there must be no ambiguity, okay? You are not allowed to give me a bracket that is like that, that. Because a lot of you do that. I, I know what you're doing. You're not sure which one to use. And you think that the teacher's going to choose, oh, I see it square. No, I see it uh, round. Uh, if, I, if, if there's any ambiguity, you don't get it. Now just say, no, no. So you see, it could, the inequality can come just in the parabola question. It can come in, especially in grade 12, sequence and series. So, you know, they often give you a number pattern and it becomes an equation and like, what uh, it might be quadratic, so it's a quadratic number pattern, which you do in grade 11. I don't think we've done number patterns yet. So you could get that where, so a quadratic number pattern becomes a parabola and they might, uh, give you a question where it becomes inequality, you know, which is the greatest value. And then, you know, it becomes a quadratic inequality again. So it's very, and a very, very, very important section. All right, let's quickly look. I'm keeping an eye on the time. If you don't mind, I'm taking the hat off. Okay, um, next question. Oh, now this is such a typical exam question. So I hope you are all awake. And if you are looking tired, shake your head, jump up and down, but watch, very typical exam question. Now, it goes like this. 1.2, two dots, which means times, four to the X plus one plus 10, dot two to the X equals to three. I've got a feeling we've done this, but anyway, I'll show you again, very, very important. Now you might say, ma'am, it's positive one X, positive one X, ha ha, but, but hang on a tickle, hang on a tickle. Those bases are not the same. So let's break the, the base that has the variable ex exponent must become the same. So do you agree that there's two dots, which means times, four is two squared, and we're gonna raise that to an exponent and I'll put it in brackets because you're going to have to distribute it. Don't bother break up 10 
and bring the three to the left because I can tell you this is going to become a trinomial. Watch this space. See if I'm right. Okay? Because, first of all, let's just keep that two. We'll come, we'll come back to him. There's two. So this becomes 2x plus 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Remember, that's a 1. There is plus 10 times 2 to the x minus 3. Now, we can just need to add up. This is an example, great heavens, where the bases are the same and you times it. Ma'am, so don't you make 10 into 5 thing. times 2? Say that again, Landshop. Don't you make 10 into 5 times 2? No, you don't need to. You don't need to. I'll, I'll show you why. I'll show you why. Okay? I'm just going to add this. So this becomes... So I'm not dividing. I'm just saying I'm adding this. So then I'm 2x plus... Okay, can I break it into factors as well? So I don't know if I'm, I'm running out of space, but do you agree that if you add a 2 and 1, you get a 3? So I can write that as 2 to the 2x times 2 to the 3. Because... Let me just show you there. That is 2. You add the 2x plus the 2 and the 1. So you're going to get 2 to the 2x plus 3, which is 2 to the 2x times 2 to the 3. Right? You've got to know that. All right? Keep the 10. I'll tell you why. Now watch. Because this is the new, the new stuff, guys. Look, we've got terms. So we know we're going to factorize. Now look at the variable index. An index, I told you, it's just another name for exponent. Do you see this exponent, variable exponent, is 2x for the 2. 2 to the 2x, right? This is 2 to the 1x. Now, what makes me know exactly what to do, if that is 2x and that is 1x, this becomes K method, right? So you let the smaller one, you say let 2 to the x equals to k. Now, I'm just making sure you can still read that. Yeah, just. Okay, so now I have to erase this. Speed erasing with hand, okay? Now, a lot of you still don't understand why 2 to the 2x would become k squared. Can I try and explain? That is 2 to the x times 2 to the x. All right? Because same base, you'd write base at 2, you'd write base 2, you add the exponent. But if that's k and that's k, well, then you see why that becomes k squared. Okay, I'll just leave that there so you can see it. It's not part of the question as per, it's just a fluffy cloud note. Notes to you. Mel? Oh. Yeah, I understand. You have four minutes. Thanks. I, for a minute, I thought I had one. I can, I can finish this easily in four. In fact, I can probably do the next question as well. So, do you understand? This here, that, becomes k squared. But this is times 2 to the 3, which is 8. Now, we can multiply in any order. So, I'll come back to that. Plus. Now, I should have actually... Uh, wait, that minus two. Okay. You see here? You see here? Do you understand it becomes 10 times k? Do you see why I didn't want to break up my 10? I could see this was going to happen. I could see it from there. I could see it from the question. All right? And then here you have minus 3 equals 0. So this, should we rather write it as 8? I'm going to go k squared plus 10k minus 3 is 0. Now, guys, I'm going to factorize this. I know you guys probably use the formula again. Just remember, k equals 2, not x. But you are, you're going to never finish your exam if you keep using that quad formula. We're looking for the difference of 10 from 8 and 3. So 8 is 8 to 1, 2 or 4. I love prime numbers, 3, 1, 1, 3. And we're looking for the difference of 10. Let me find it first. Uh, Um, wait, the difference of 10 or this? Uh, uh, no, it is definitely the difference of 10. Uh, can anyone see it or am I being blind or stupid? Or have I made a mistake? I've got the memo. Let me just see. Um, I've, I've probably made a mistake. I always find when I'm taught I have like two, three minutes, it's like you and exams. It's a little... Then you just... Okay. Um, I'm two and 
Now that is that is perfectly right. Four and two. Yeah, right. Yeah, and two and, and twelve. One and three. Two and twelve. Yeah, twelve minus two. Is ten. I told you a fact, right? Okay, I've still got two minutes. Thank you, my darlings. But listen, let's say that happened to me in an exam, and I just oh, then just use the quad formula. Use k equals minus b plus minus b squared minus four ac over two a. Solve for k. Get the answer. Does it matter? Right now, I'm going to go fast. So it's two k, four k, three and one. That tells you the signs will be different. The biggest product gets plus. That is twelve. That's two. That's plus. That's minus. Now, this is not a quadratic inequality. Solve for k. K is going to be minus three over two from this factor. Or k is going to be a quarter from this factor, right? But now k, you've got to understand. I'm looking for my red pen. I can't find it. K is what? Two to the x. So you have two to the x equals minus three over two, or you have two to the x equals that will be two to the minus one. So x will be minus one. And guys, I've told you, you can't have any value there that will give you a negative. You've got your right to get this mark, no solution. Think about it at home. Two to the naught is one. Two to the minus one, flip it, it's a half. So you, you can never have a base to the x equals a negative. Mark, 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 mark. I don't know. Okay, anyway, I love you. We're gonna get cut off. Keep working, uh, I'll send you um, some more questions. Bye, darlings.